Well, I guess that just about does it for this crime scene. Hey, Nick! I want to see the rest of the airship. We might as well, since we're here. True, we might even run into some of the older, other people involved in the case. Hello? Nick! How long has that guy been standing there? I didn't even notice him until just now. Uh, excuse me. Are you with Sprocket Aviation? Huh? Nick, hey, he wrote something on that paper airplane. I guess we're supposed to read it then. I'm not gonna. Uh, fine, let's see here. Get out, intruders. Well, that was a rather cold welcome. Uh, Mr. Wright, my, uh, meet the lone son of the president of Sprocket Aviation. Soren Sprocket. Or to put it another way, the future president of Sprocket Aviation. So, he's Ellen's fiance? Kind of the quiet type, huh? Hmm. Oh, there he goes. He's kind of an eccentric. I have thoughts already. He's the genius inventor behind many of Sprocket Aviation's business successes. An inventor, huh? Yep, he even designed this airship. That's pretty impressive. Nick, this is no time to be standing around gawking. We have to go after him. We need to ask him some questions about Ellen. Uh, oh, right. Looked like he was heading outside. Okay, well, thanks for the help, Emma. Let's head to, I guess outside is the mooring dock. Outside, outside, like all the way outside. Sprocket Park, mooring dock. I'm just gonna play with these airplanes. There he is. Excuse me. Could we talk to you? Excuse me. D do you mind if I ask what you're doing? Hmm. You're just gonna write notes to us? He, he sure is writing up a storm! Is he mute? It is possible if an enormous change in mass could be detected at the observation point, then theoretically matter can retain its form even as it crosses the event horizon. <laughs> Let's just see what he has to say about Ellen. Uh, okay. I thought he was talking to us. Excuse me, but we'll be representing Ellen in court tomorrow. So, uh, could we ask you about the case? Uh. Ow! What the? Not interested. Not interested? How can you say something like that? This is about your fiance. She's under arrest, you know. The diameter of the airship is approximately 80 feet. The amount of energy necessary to move mass comprised of the amount of mass is... Now he's off in his own little world. I can't believe he said he was not interested in talking about his own bride's arrest! We'll just have to talk on his level then. With something he might be interested in. So we're gonna present something to him. Like perhaps... The really cool timekeeper. Hmm. 
What are you showing me that for? M Mr. Sprocket! I can't read him at all. Not even with an item as loaded with sentiments as this. Um... Her pendant? Can you take a look at this? Is that... Ellen's? Ellen told us that she traveled through time during the incident. She said it happened after she made a wish on this pendant. You mean to say you two are Ellen's lawyers? Yes. I just told you that a minute ago. Sorry, I was lost in thought. He wasn't even listening? Oh, boy. It's not at all what I expected, based on Ellen's gushing testimonial, anyway. Alright, well that changed the dialogue option, at least. <clears throat> What's up, shy boy? When I talk to you about Ellen's case, if you don't mind. I don't know a thing about it, so why don't you go ask the police? In other words, not interested. Hmm. This guy is the worst! Now I feel sorry for poor Ellen! In that case, can I ask you about how Ellen traveled through time? Go on. Guess that got your attention. So, is time travel really even possible? Yes, it is possible. Uh, alrighty then. At the same time, it is also impossible. The pendant I gave Ellen is not supposed to operate as a time machine by itself. What do you mean? The timekeeper, that clock we had displayed in the reception hall, that is the body of the time machine. The pendant is simply a part. The clock was the murder weapon, wasn't it? But it's a time machine too? What Ellen experienced is akin to traveling down a road by car key. Physically and metaphysically, it should be impossible. Unless, maybe the quantum system inside the pendant somehow accidentally interfered with the natural flow of the fourth dimension. We're losing him again. Maybe we better ask him some more about the time machine. So, you've been researching time travel, have you? Moving through the space-time continuum would be men's ultimate means of travel. Time travel as a mode of transportation? Since the dawn of time, man has developed multifarious methods of transportation. Horses, steam engines, gas engines, airplanes, spaceships. But they are all fundamentally similar in that they constitute three-dimensional movement. Travel through space-time continuum would shift mankind into a new paradigm. I don't know why, Nick, but I'm getting awfully sleepy all of a sudden. For generations, Sprocket Aviation has advanced the development of transportation. Therefore, it's only natural that I would research time travel as man's next great leap. Yawn. Oh! Oh, is he done? So what exactly does all that stuff he was saying mean, Nick? Can you translate it for, for the board of us? Well, basically, it's like taking a hamburger joint and adding a drive through to it, I guess. This is already a flawed metaphor, and I'm just getting started. <laughs> oh, I get it. It's the same burger, but with a quicker and more efficient delivery system. So what someone really wants to do is launch humanity into the future. Huh? Launch, not lunch. But do you really believe that time travel is possible? It only becomes truly impossible when man stops daring to believe. Besides, time travelers do exist, you know. But you wouldn't understand. Did you hear that, Nick? Time travelers really do exist! All I know is Soren isn't the easiest guy to wrap your head around. 
Oh, I don't know. I kind of like the way he talks. He's full of hope for the future. He's more passionate than I thought, too, when it comes to inventions, anyway. Yeah, his apparent lack of concern for Ellen is troubling, though. So, I hear that the rest of the Sprocket family was opposed to your marriage. What are your thoughts on that? Bye. Master Sword. Is it time for the meeting on next time's project? Sephiroth! What is this? Daydreaming about your inventions again. Tut tut, you are the future president. You must consider the business side too. It is I. I found Soren. Send the car over at once. I'm not interested. Oh, Master Soren, you do give me quite the headache at times. In any case, your attendant is waiting. Please go to him now. Uh, excuse me, but who are you? Uh, where are my manners? Uh, my name is Pierce Nickety. Pierce Nickety. Ha ha ha. Please call me Pierce. <laughs> I'm the Sprocket family and Bridler. Nick, a butler? I didn't know they actually still existed. I thought they were just on TV and stuff. And who might you be, if you don't mind my asking? Oh, I'm Phoenix Wright, Ellen Wyatt's lawyer. And I'm his assistant, Maya Faye. I'm a spirit medium. Oh, so it is you. I'm most grateful to you for taking on Miss Ellen's defense. You have my sincerest thanks. D don't mention it. So, hey, uh, speaking of the case, uh, one moment, please. Wow, what a beautiful pocket watch! Oh, this is just a bit of good luck charm. It's one expensive good luck charm. But I guess it makes sense, knowing the time is pretty important in his line of work. So I guess that pocket watch is as important to him as my attorney's badge is to me. There's little time before I must attend to Master Soren again. Why not come to Sprocket Manor? Huh? You mean to Soren's home? As a token appreciation for taking on Miss Ellen's defense, I would like to serve you some delicious tea and refreshments. Oh boy, Nick! A fancy high society tea party with high class snacks and everything! And what about the investigation? Are you kidding? What better place to investigate than Soren's house? I don't know. Do you really think his house is going to give us any new leads? Of course it will! I say we take the butler up on his kind offer and go to Soren's place. Alright, alright. You win. Very good. To Sprocket Manor, then. Very well! To Sprocket Manor, then! Oh, foyer. So we're going to a few places in the manor. Oh man, so many servants just sitting around. Don't you guys have anything to do? If you have time to lean, you have time to clean. Wow, this place does not disappoint. Ooh, I'm so excited! Whoa, slow down, Maya! The mansion isn't going anywhere, unless it can fly, which case, and it probably does. Now then, we won't have to worry about anyone untoward eavesdropping here. Uh, Persnickety is the word persnickety, which means just very, someone who's very full of themselves. I take it you wanted to ask me some questions. Huh? Oh. That's why you invited us here. 
I'm sorry to have tricked you like this, but this is a murder, after all. I couldn't talk openly about it in public and risk sullying the Sprocket family's reputation. Oh, I was really looking forward to all those fancy snacks, too. There, there, Maya. Don't cry. Hmm, this Pierce guy is one shrewd man. Hey, Nick, look at that cute vintage radio. Radio? Oh, that thing over there under the stuffed bull's head? I'm gonna take a closer look. I thought I told you to settle down. I'm sorry. Not to worry. Whoa. I'm concerned. Wow, that little mech fixed it right up. I'm not only the better butler, but I'm also Sprocket Aviation's Repair Department Director. One might say that patching things up is my speciality. That was incredible! What is that little doohickey on your shoulder anyway? It's my fixer upper me shoulder mech. Master Soren made it for me. There's too many features and functions to effectively enumerate at the moment, though. That's so cool! I wish I had one of those! Fixing things is a simple matter, but fixing people is a different matter. Even a skilled physician can't bring back the dead. Oh, but forgive me. I seem to have gotten sidetracked. You must be in shock over Mr. Gloomsbury's death. Still, I do need to ask him some questions about the case. I should take a look around and see what I can find out while I'm here, too. Okay. Questions! What happened? About the incident Mr. Ellen was arrested for. Do you think she did it? Well, I can't prove it yet, but no, I don't think she could have done it. I guess you could call it a gut feeling. I see. I guess we have different opinions, then. Do we now? The prosecution says that when Gloomsbury attacked Miss Ellen, she fought back and ended up killing him. I agree with his perspective. Or rather, that is the consensus of the entire Sprocket family. Even so, I heard an interesting story from Chief Prosecutor Edgeworth. I heard the Sprocket family had tried to pressure the prosecutor's office into burying this case. I fear you are mistaken. All we saw was merely a legal consultation. Besides, none of it matters now, as she is no longer a part of this family. Fortunately for us, they had yet to get their marriage license before holding the banquet. As usually you do that first. So basically, once they realized they couldn't sway the prosecution, they cut her loose. I realize how callous I must sound. But my duty is to protect the Sprocket family, and more specifically, Sprocket Aviation's future and Master Soren, whose genius is essential to the company. I will do anything to achieve that goal. That is my job as the Sprocket family butler. You know, I think Pierce and Mr. Edgeworth would get along really well, don't you think? Yeah, I could easily picture Edgeworth with a butler. He's kind of half butler himself. And by the way, I suppose I should tell you about this as well. It is about when the members of the extended family and I discovered the crime. Okay. But I would like to know about time travel. Tell me about it. Um, did Ellen say anything to you about traveling through time? She must have been delirious. There's no need to take such a claim seriously. 
Soren himself said that time travel was possible, though. Hmm. Master Soren said that. It sounds like he's still stuck in the past. <laughs> he's psychologically stuck, I take it. Unless someone stashed him in the past. Excuse me. <laughs> What is it? I see. I believe I told you the madam will be having milk tea. Still, I have lemon slices at the ready, just in case. We must not disappoint her, understand? You sure are busy. All in a day's work. Still, we really do need Master Sawin to start focusing on the business side of things soon. Uh, could you tell us about that? thing you mentioned about Soren's past? There is something in Master Soren's past that he wishes he could change. Please forgive me, this isn't something I should be sharing with strangers. Now I really want to know what Soren's still hang up on. Okay, so he's got something weird in his past. It was some time after the reception. Some of the Master's relatives and I went to clean up the reception hall. And that is when we saw it. A woman standing in front of the victim with the bloody murder weapon in her hand. That looks hard to you wield. It was none other than Miss Ellen. But Pierce, it, it wasn't what it looked like. That's right, she just happened to find the body. I do not know what Miss Ellen has told you, but what we witnessed was unmistakably the moment immediately after the deed had been committed. Ugh. And that is what I told the police who came in response to my call. Ah, uh, I see. So Pierce was the one who reported it to the police, huh? Based on who would potentially have the most interesting breakdown, my suspicions are leaning already towards Pierce, but... Alright, what can we look at around? Whatever this is. Oh, it's the bridal bouquet! Hey Nick, how about I throw it? And you try to catch it! So what it... I don't, that's not how bouquets work. Why me? Just because. I bet you'd look hilarious flailing around trying to grab it. But doesn't tradition dictate that it's the ladies that go after the bouquet? Who cares? Just catch it! Here! Uh, 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 ow! Hey, you threw that right in my face! Oh, you don't want to catch... Oh, you don't want to catch that bouquet, trust me! Why not? They say it's bad luck to catch the bouquet of a marriage that doesn't last. But, but I already caught it. Whoops, too late now, huh, Nick? Now you'll never get married. Sorry, if you wanted some backstory or plot development, you don't get it. You don't get to develop your character. Ha! Uh, uh, uh. Let's look at the radio. Don't you dare touch that radio again. It looks like an expensive antique. What are you worried about? If it breaks again, Pierce will just fix it up again. I really hope he's nice enough to waive the repair bill. Okay. Um, is this a Pegamoo? A bull. Come to think of it, there was a bull logo on the side of the Flying Chapel, too. The president of the company must have a thing for cattle. The, the bull is the symbol of Sprocket's aviation. To be strong and steady as a bull. That's the company creed, you know. Probably for all the back-breaking labor they put their employees through. By the way, the blue logo in the Flying Chapel, the one with the rainbow wings. His name is Rainy the Rainbow. Get it? I get it. He's a rainbow-colored bull, so he's a rainbow, right? What a memorable name, huh, Nick? Yeah, for the lameness of the pun. Alright, I see this note on the ground. 
excuse me, but there's a card here on the floor. Well, look at that. It's a flying chapel key card. The flying chapel? What areas in the flying chapel require a key card, if I may ask? Mostly areas we want to keep the public out of. Such as the staff room and the hold, which is chock full of machinery. So you can't enter those areas without a key card. That's right. Hmm? This one here belongs to Ellen. Wait, what's Ellen's key card doing here? Did Ellen come back here after the incident occurred? I don't believe so. And she was arrested by the police straight away this morning. Although, there was a strange man with a gaudy jacket in here earlier. Was that man... Wearing a beret, by any chance? Yes, he was, as a matter of fact. He was also wearing sunglasses and a very, very fake mustache. Hey, Chip Chip, Cheerio, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a famous artist. I knew it. The only question is, what was he doing here? All right, what's on the table? Oh, are those pictures of the wedding reception? Yeah, I took them with my trusty camera here. Um, do you want to be able to look at that photo? Be my guest, take as long of a look as you'd like. Do we have a copy of the photo? Oh. With the fog machine, it looks like you're up in the clouds. That's really cool. Well, what do you think of this gorgeous dreamscape? A thick fog bellows across the room, making it look as if the couple were walking on clouds. Wow, look at how beautiful Ellen is here. She looks a little nervous, though. She does, doesn't she? Hey, look, there's Pierce! Really? Where? Right there, behind the sweetheart table. Oh. Hmm, how dare they get married. Yeah. Hey, you're right. I bet he was there attending to the happy couple the whole dinner. Looming in the shadows. Yeah. So what do you think, Nick? Does anything in this photo stick out at you? Mm, no, not at the moment, anyway. But let's put it in the court record, because that's gonna be important. Hey, Nick. Thelum really did travel back in time. Do you think this photo is of the second reception? You know, after the time jump? Huh. I wonder. Hmm. Excuse me, sir? Yes, can I help you? Ellen told us she traveled back in time. <laughs> Would you happen to know anything about that? Oh, uh, no, no. Uh, I, um, uh, I haven't the foggiest idea what you're talking about. Suspicious! He clammed up faster than a clam, and that's all clams do. Huh. I really wonder if there wasn't- it seems almost too conspiratorial, but if everybody was acting a part, and then they just knocked her out, and then woke her up, and then they just acted it out a second time, that'd be really consp- like, you'd need everybody to play along, but you could do that in kind of, like, fake a second reception. And that's, that seems crazy, but that's the way it makes sense without time travel being possible explanation. That I'm like, boiling in the back of my head. Nick! Look at that airplane propeller up there, going round and round! I see they've got an aviation theme going on. Makes sense for an airline family. I wonder if it doubles as a fan. Ooh! What if the rest of the plane were on the other side of that wall? And the wall would open up so the plane could take off in an emergency. How cool would that be? If that's what's behind the propeller wall, then what's behind the bull wall, wall across the way? Oh, I know. Maybe it's the rest of him. That must be where the sprockets get their milk. Yeah. First of all, that's a beef cow. And second, bulls don't make milk. Don't yank down there. You're not going to like what you get. Oh, right. That's what I get for trying to play along. Great. All right, there looks to be a photograph down here. Hey, Nick! Now here's a real lady. Hmm. She looks smart as a whip, doesn't she? Is this the... is this, uh, his mother? I wonder who she is. We didn't see her on the airship. That's Selena Sprocket. Soren's elder sister. Ah! Beautiful and capable, she was a great lady. Was? Oh no. Soren's sister. Huh. 
I think I see the resemblance. It's in the blue hair. Maybe I'll show Pierce this photo later and ask him about her. Hmm, and by later, perhaps right now? Bulls Don't Make Milk might be from City Slickers, which is a really funny movie. What else have we got? And can we turn around? No, we cannot. So what are we missing? Or should we just talk now? Because I think we've examined this pretty thoroughly. Yes, let us present this picture of Selena Sprocket. Pierce, the one in this photo is Soren's older sister, Selena, right? I don't think we've met her yet. Yes, about that. He seems hesitant all of a sudden. If you wouldn't mind, could you tell us about her? Uh, all right, very well. She's a big part of Master Soren's past, after all. Soren's past? Oh. Oh. Master Soren will become the next president of Sprocket Aviation. However, that wasn't always so. Miss Selena Sprocket, Master Soren's elder sister, was next in line. So, why isn't she becoming the next president? Because she died in a car accident. What? Uh, I had no idea. Actually, Master Soren was also in the car with her at the time of the accident. Losing the sister he loved right before his eyes devastated him. Ever since then, he's buried himself in his research on time machines. He also became a quiet and meticulous, almost compulsive note-taker around then. He seems so stiff and robotic. I had no idea he was carrying all that around inside him. Master Sorton has abandoned the camp and company business and spends all his time on inventions. As the family butler, I am truly concerned. I believe it's high time he let go of the past. Hey, Nick, what are you doing here? <laughs> hey, Nick! Larry. Oh, man, the engine gave me a heck of a hard time! Larry, what are you doing here? I came to promote my new character, Q Piglet! I was hoping Sprocket Aviation would do some kind of a tie-in with me for it. They got a cow, I got a pig, we put the cow and the pig together, we got a really cool, like, a farm theme going on, right? Oh, I didn't know Larry was such an aggressive businessman. You could learn a thing or two from him, Nick. Why don't you promote your agency to them? And uh, now it's not exactly the time for that, in case you haven't noticed. See, and this is why you'll never be rich. Also, because you don't charge people money. Actually, Larry, I've been meaning to ask you something. You were there on the Flying Chapel yesterday, right? Huh? Was I? Um, uh... What were you doing there? Not- no, nothing. I- mm. Whatever it was, I bet it wasn't anything to be proud of. But never mind that. Did you see anything that had to do with the case? Scratch that. Let's start with you weren't involved in this case, were you? Ah! Larry? Hey, he took off! I just knew it. When something smells, it's usually the butts! Come on, Maya! After him! Oh, are you leaving so soon? We, uh, have to run. Thank you for making time for us. I know you have to investigate, but please, try to spare the family's feelings as you do. Uh, yeah, yes, of course. Yeah, I guess we head back out to the mooring deck. Is this where Larry ran to? I guess, oh, I guess their manor's nearby. 
There he is. Hey, Larry! Hey there, friend. Fancy, uh, fancy meeting you here. There's nothing fancy about it. All we did was follow you. So tell me, Larry. Why did you run away like that? Huh? Me? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. A bolt of inspiration for my new picture book hit me and I had to run is all. It was like, uh, a cupiphany. You dig? Huh? Right. He's just gonna keep on playing dumb, isn't he, Nick? All right, what'd you see on the airship, butts? Come on, Larry. I know you're on that airship. So what did you see? I I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything because I was never on that stupid airship. Are you cyclocking me, Larry? You were definitely on the airship. I have at least one really solid piece of proof. Cyclox. Say something. The spiritual power of this Magatama allows me to see these mystical locks that appear when someone is trying to hide something from me. They're called Cyclocks. And when I see them, I simply touch the Magatama to try my hand at breaking them. If I can unlock them, I'm sure to finally get a straight answer out of him. Alright, butts. Let's break those locks. Pretty simple. Just a two-locker. And we got a lot of evidence to throw at him. This is no time for games, Larry. I will find out what you're hiding. I'm telling you, Nick. You got it all wrong. I got nothing to do with this case whatsoever. Come on, Larry. Even a baby can see through such a blatant and obvious lie. Nothing whatsoever, huh? If you weren't involved, Larry, then you wouldn't have been involved with this person. Ellen Wyatt. You're the one who brought Ellen to my office in the first place. And all those cops. Um. Nothing to do with the case whatsoever. Isn't gonna cut it this time, Larry. If you have to lie, at least do a better job of it. <laughs> D don't diss me, Nick. If you're so convinced I'm lying, then let me ask you this. What makes you think I was on that stupid old airship anyway? Let me see some proof if you got any. Doubling down, are you? Fine. You want proof, Larry? Here's proof that you were on that airship. I found your wallet. Take that! Uh-oh. This is your business card wallet, isn't it, Larry? I found it in the reception hall. Gah! Time to come clean, Larry Butts. What exactly are you hiding? <laughs> All right, fine, you got me. I'll tell you everything. Unlock successful. What did you see, Mr. Butts? Larry, what were you doing on that airship anyway? Well, I went there to deliver the welcome to our wedding sign they ordered from me. Huh. I don't know you took on real jobs like that, too. Well, for your information, my wedding welcome signs are very popular on the net. And that's how you met Ellen? Uh-huh. I mean, I'd seen her in the photo for the welcome sign, but seeing her in person... The way she smiled at me and said, thank you. <sighs> I felt like I'd been hit by lightning. And that's when you fell in love with somebody else's bride, huh? So, were you invited to the reception? Can you believe they told me only family and relatives could attend? They wouldn't even let me into the reception hall! Smart move on their part, I'd say. I got upset and started wandering around the airship. That must be when I dropped my business card wallet. So somebody else must have found it. And brought it to the reception hall then. But you know what? I saw something incredible while I was on that flying chapel. Like... Get a load of this! Uh, w what the heck is this? Did you draw this? Did you draw this? It's kind of nice. What do you mean, what is this? Isn't it obvious? It's a drawing! I sketched a picture of one of the cabins on the airship. 
So what's so incredible about a cabin? Look at what was outside the window. A pterodactyl. It's one of those flying dinosaurs. A real life pterodactyl. I looked at the cabin window and there it was. Just flying out there. That airship traveled through time, I tell you. Uh, what? What? When I told that Pierce Butler guy about it, he told me to never mention it to anybody ever again. Why would he try to keep you from spouting what is clearly just nonsense? Maybe Sprocket Aviation is secretly developing a time machine. No way. Nick, this case is totally amazing. Larry. Larry! You didn't tell Mr. Edgeworth about this, did you? Of course not. Edgy would just roll his eyes and think I was off my rocker, which he does anyway. I didn't even tell him I was wandering around in the airship. I told him I met Ellie at the mooring dock and we ran away together. Yeah, I can see Edgeworth's eyes rolling right out of his head had he heard about this. Larry's drawing added to the court record. Not exactly conclusive evidence, is it? But it is a testimony. So Larry also experienced the time slip somehow. But how is that possible? Hey, Nick, um, I'll be taking my card wallet back now, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah, uh, this is for you. What is it? It's a picture of the hold. I took it when I was wandering around on the airship. See, there's Ellie right there in the middle. Uh, the hold? <coughs> yeah, see? Right, it's right here on this diagram. And you can't get there without a key card. <clears throat> okay, so now I know what the hold is. But what was Ellen doing there? Well, they were just using it as a prepping area for the reception. I see, and around when did you take this? Before the reception. I took it while Ellie was getting everything ready. So this was taken before the incident occurred. I don't know if it'll be of any help, but thanks for this anyway. Okay. By the way, Larry, I had heard that the door to the hold is controlled by a security system. So how'd you get in there? That's a trade secret, I can't tell you! And the hits just keep on coming. Well, I guess that's basically a wrap on the investigation. Not quite, Nick. I want to meet Ellen, too. Oh, that's right. You haven't met her yet, have you? Okay, let's head over to the detention center. Then, so you can say hi. Also, I'm just gonna say, having heard about all of this, uh, we can't even look. It never hurts to take another look around. I actually think this looks kind of like a pterodactyl. Are you guys seeing that too, or am I crazy? Wow, that sign really got smashed up. There were some really high winds yesterday, and they say that that bench was blown right into the sign. Wow, I wish I could have seen that. If you'd been there, you would have gotten blown away by the wind too, you know. This sounds like kind of fun, actually. Don't tell me you never tried to use an umbrella to fly when you were a kid. I think I'll take staying alive over fun. Thank you very much. I have suspicions that that is a fake pterodactyl and I'm not allowed to discover it yet. I think people are trying to make it seem like they have time travel, but it's not really there. Okay. Let's head over and talk to... Ellen. <clears throat> no, why? Please understand that this is in Master Soren's best, best interest. Sounds like Ellen's busy talking with someone. I guessed it. The next president cannot be married to a criminal. He would disgrace Sprocket Aviation. Miss Ellen, I need you to forget about this marriage. Pardon us, um, if it isn't Mr. Wright. So, their marriage is definitely off? There's no other choice. 
and he cannot have a criminal in the family. For the sake of Master Soren and the Sprocket family, this is what is best. <laughs> no! Um, in that case, what if Nick here proved Ellen's innocence? Then you wouldn't have a criminal in the family, right? I suppose you are right, but I am afraid that will be impossible. It's not true. Not for Nick. He may look like a nobody, but he can do some pretty amazing things. I don't take cases on lightly, so rest assured I will prove her innocence. Mr. Phoenix Wright, I understand your name is quite well known in the judicial world. For better or for worse? Pierce, I want you to promise me this. If I can prove Ellen's innocence, then you won't stand in the way of Soren and Ellen's marriage. Hmm, very well. But not even the most talented lawyer in the world can change reality itself. Hmm. And the reality is, Miss Ellen is guilty beyond a shadow of a doubt. I believe that's where you're wrong, Pierce. It's good clean, I swear I am! <laughs> Obsessively, compulsively clean! Just as clean and pure as this pure white dress. Fine. You have my word. But you will be the one to regret this promise. Now, if you will excuse me. Now I have all the more reason to win this case. Ellen, we finished our investigation and we'd like to talk with you about what we found. Okay, so what did you find out? Okay. In the course of our investigation, we heard that you had been stand seen standing in front of the victim with the murder weapon in your hands. Hey. Hey. I, it wasn't what it looked like. It's true, I was holding the murder weapon. But when I found him, he was already dead. I, I panicked, and I was hoping I could go back in time again, like I had done earlier. So I picked up the timekeeper from the pedestal and brought it over without thinking. You were so desperate, you were ready to try anything, huh? Unfortunately, that sort of behavior makes an, an, you an easy target for the prosecution. No. And as for your little trip through time, None of your in-laws could confirm your story, I'm afraid. I... I see. The only exception is Larry. He said he saw something. Really? What did he see? He saw a pterodactyl. I can't say I quite believe it myself, but Larry claims he saw something incredible. He claims he saw a pterodactyl flying outside the airship. What? We're dropping the pan. Not only that, but apparently Pierce Snickety told Larry to keep quiet about it. But why would Pierce do such a thing? Larry's theory is that Sprocket Aviation is developing something in secret. A time machine to be exact. Do you think? Do you think that's why nobody would confirm my story? Because it's a secret? Uh, I really don't know. But speaking of your in-laws, we did manage to find your key card at Sprocket Manor. One of your in-laws said he'd keep an eye on it for you. Oh, thank goodness. 
I lost it while I was getting things ready for the reception. I'd looked everywhere for it. I'm so glad you found it! <laughs> At least they're tears of joy this time, for a change. Well, Nick, looks like you'll have to prove the existence of time travel in court tomorrow. That's right! I swear that while Mr. Gloomsbury was being killed, I was busy traveling back through time! Great. With stodgy skeptic Edgeworth at the helm for the prosecution tomorrow, we're really gonna have our work cut out for us. Ugh. To be continued. Well, that is all the time we've got for investigation. Uh, see you next time. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.